Following is a conversation with Jake Norton, Everest historian, multi-time summiter, photographer, public speaker, who has put together a comprehensive map of all the searches that have taken place on the north face of Mount Everest to try to solve the mystery of the disappearance of George Mallory and Sandy Irvin on June 8th, 1924. Today, I'm gonna to talk with Jake about the possibility that Mallory and Irvin took a route referred to as the Norton Couloir, which is the other way that somebody conceivably could get to the summit as opposed to the ridge route that would require them to go up and over the second step. I hope you'll take a minute out of your day to click subscribe and also to like this video and to share it with those who might find it interesting. And also, I hope you'll share your comments on this video. After all, we're all here together who agree that this is a fascinating mystery. We can keep this conversation civil. I have such great respect and appreciation for everyone who puts time and effort into this mystery, into solving this mystery. And although many of us disagree on what happened and the details, we all can agree that it's a fascinating mystery and it brings us all together. So this page, this channel, this video, we keep it civil and there's room to agree and disagree, but we always keep it respectful. That's the primary objective of this channel. Now to my conversation with Jake Norton, who all but blows the lid off the possibility that Mallory and Irvin took the Norton Couloir. Yeah. Hey, Jake. So let's talk about uh, the the root differentiations and in the in the 15 or so minutes that we have left um talk yeah. about that idea well one we know that at least in 1924 the second step would have been monumental in terms of to surmount and then especially to get back down right. and so i never questioned it back then because we were told that the second step was the route we were studying I was so new to the story, I just assumed that was it, right? So um, where the location of George Mallory's body is at this time, at least was when we found him, um, I always just made this jump thinking he got to, they got to the second step, said, we're never going to make it, let's get the heck out of here. Yeah. Um, over the years, there, there have been a lot of new amazing research and, and reflection on this, and so some tend to believe that maybe the Norton couloir was a possible or viable route and um, which would which would require one to traverse under the ridge to get to it. And before I have you give your answer, I've always thought like, well, to prove it, we'd need somebody to go there right. and try it. And I don't think any, well, I mean, maybe back in, in past histories, people have, the Canadians, yeah. I think, or the Australians rather. Um, but somebody's got to go there and test out the theory. Like this is a piece of cake. I never thought it was a piece of cake. So, all right, long and long question. What do you think about it? And could you explain how one would actually get to the Norton Traverse or yeah. who are? Yeah, yeah. So again, you know, they were coming in in twenty four. Their high camp, which we found in one, was right here. So they you know, would have come up probably up the ridge and maybe up through the Longland Traverse if if they were taking the Northeast Ridge and then they would have made their way up to the ridge and followed the ridge crest up. And like you said, that's what we all believed for so long. And, you know, perhaps erroneously, I'm still not totally convinced, but, um, but yeah, recent research has come to light in the last couple of years that Mallory passed a note to John Knoll um, and mentioned that he was going to head out this way and more on the Norton line and uh, either come come up this way somehow and maybe get back to the ridge uh, if the west wind, the wind coming in this way was too strong that he thought would give him some protection. Um, so that opens up a whole new can of worms, you know, because uh, Somerville and Norton four days before Mallory and Irvin uh, climbed up <clears throat> and they made a bit of a lower traverse through the yellow band here, uh, came, came right along here underneath the second step into the great couloir and Norton turned around right about here. Somerville had turned around far earlier that day or waited for Norton to return. Mm -hmm. But Norton, you know, got into waist deep snow 
it's steep it's all that down sloping rotten rock just Ooh. feels like you're on a 10,000 foot church roof or something oh. it's just not hard but awful and yeah. so he wisely turned around made it to 28 126 or thereabouts and how and steep it, was it do you, you think know, I, I mean it's got to be you know 40 degrees or something but with oh. tremendous exposure you know one slip and you're you're toast mm. and what amazes me is he was in a tweed coat with no oxygen up there too he, and looked, nobody... he looked so good he could have gone out to a dinner party in that yeah outfit. i know i know totally he's like oh i say let's just go <laughs> climb the mountain today shall we howard um, <laughs> But so what's been suggested recently is that, you know, of this idea of a zigzag route going somewhere through these slabs here. And that's the Norton exactly. Couloir right yeah, there? Yeah, this is, yeah, the Norton Couloir. Here's the head of it. And there's been various routes that have gone through here. I've never been 100% clear on where exactly people went. You've got, you know, You've got subsidiary couloirs here, and this is, you know, a bird's eye view, so it's hard to see all the features completely. Um, but, you know, this terrain, I mean, I've played around enough on the upper north face getting into this terrain. I mean, this stuff is is scary, horrifically exposed and and totally insecure. You know, people talk about the second step certainly difficult but at least you've got pretty solid rock there and if you're holding on to something it's not going to snap off it's not going to kick out under your feet whereas this is just down sloping rotten piles of crap all around and um and you know what the reason because of its steepness i i find it hard to believe that mallory and Irvin would have gone that way nor because you look at everyone else who's been up there and none of them have chosen to go up through here so you had norton four days before who kind of looked at it and largely dismissed it i mean he continued on straight across the cool war and then you had in 33 you had uh wager and win harris and then frank Smythe a few days later who all looked up into this terrain and didn't really see it as viable they went to the same spot as norton then you had Messner in 1980, who who went up essentially some, I think he came in a bit lower, but he didn't go up through this stuff. And then in 1984, you had Phil Urschler solo, who uh, followed the route the Aussies had made without oxygen a few days, a few weeks before. And again, none of them touched any of this stuff here. And so, so I'm like, if if there was a viable, straightforward route through here, why wouldn't Messner, Wager, Frank Smythe, any of those guys over the years chosen to at least poke into it. Oh, and then you also had Simonson and Vesters in 91 who came up here and didn't and said, no friggin' way are we going to go into that mess. So I, I find it really hard to believe maybe they tried Norton's route, perhaps, but I, I can't imagine there's a viable route through here that would be any more optimal than the second step. So in that, that's fantastic description of it. So in that, with the arrow that you have, where are the, the people who believe in the Norton Kuwar route? Where do they, are they putting uh, Odell's last sighting of the two surmounting the ridge? Would that necessarily require them to have done the Norton Kuwar where the body, where they were surmounting the ridge? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people now are, you know, it's almost reverse engineering, I think, to some extent that, you know, Odell said he could, he, the big part of Odell's testimony says they climbed a great rock step a short distance from the base of the final pyramid, and they were up it in, in you know, relatively quick time, five minutes or so. Second step, you certainly can't do that. The first step, it's hard, hard to imagine his view would have been right to really see it that clearly because the obvious route on the first step, you know, is more on the face of it rather than on the ridge line. So it really what he says he saw really applies to the third step more and you could climb it in that period of time, you'd be pretty well silhouetted. <clears throat> but, but that none of the timing makes sense for the ridge route. So that's where I think a lot of this zigzag idea came up where you know again somewhere in this general vicinity 
you'd have to find enough of a weakness in the in the strata where we can kind of see a line here mm -hmm. you know, across this bench back and over but again if that were straightforward and doable you know if i were for example reinhold messner in 1980 I, and I knew this route went easily. Nobody had been over in here. Why wouldn't I cut over to the route that I knew when I'm solo without oxygen is going to go pretty easily? So, so just it doesn't it doesn't quite make sense to me. But but I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just hard for me to decipher how that would work. Um, to to add to that, we were talking before I hit record, and you were in Germany recently spending time with none other than Reinhold Mesner at an event and you were a, you were a speaker where he was the keynote um it you asked him about that and yeah. what did Reinhold have to say about the idea of of Mallory Nerve and taking the Norton Kuwar route yeah so I you know he of course you know knows Norton's story very well and walked right through a lot of his footsteps but but I told him about this theory of doing a zigzag and and he in a very Reinhold Messner, very, uh, very certain of his words sort of way said, no, not possible. He's like, there was nothing up there. I would not go there. The only route is where I went. And, you know, that's arguably one of the best high altitude mountaineers, if not the best that's ever lived. And so I, I, I got to take his word with some seriousness if he because he said he looked up into it and it and he was like, no, I'm I'm going this way. Yeah, I think what happens is um, it's from sea level, and especially if you've never been on that terrain or on terrain at altitude, it, it's sometimes easy to easier to project uh, possibilities onto a scenario, and so there are many who are like oh it definitely was that and odell definitely saw them here but but the truth is is like nobody knows nobody yeah. knows at least nobody knows better than a reinhold mesner or you know the the people who have been up there to say no way right just no way right and that's you know i think the as we talked about earlier the the double-edged sword of this whole story i mean it, its beauty is in that we know so relatively little that it, there's so many options, so many possibilities, and yet it's incredibly frustrating and difficult uh, because that unknown allows a lot of certainty in, in the unknowns, if that makes sense, that people yeah tend to grasp onto things. And I think, you know, I've certainly been guilty of that, always believing, no, they, they took the ridge and now having to confront that and say, maybe, you know, maybe they didn't, maybe they went a different way, but then it's, okay, where did they go? Where could they have gone? Do we believe Odell? I, I do, I want to, but maybe he didn't see what he thought he saw. Um, you know, there's so, so many questions. And, you know, one thing I go back to when you talked earlier about the second step and the and and the Chinese and how tough they were the you know the thing I always come back to with the second step is if you look how they did it in 1960 you know and they weren't technical rock climbers Mallory certainly was he was one of the best of his day but they took off boots and crampons and and uh I'm forgetting all the names but um stood on one another they made a human ladder and suffered immense frostbite for yeah. it but you know that wasn't an, an unconventional technique in the 20s and so i don't you know i, I do see a possibility of mallory and Irvin having employed a, a courta shell and and you know made the human ladder like you I, I can see them getting up the step i can't see how they would have gotten back down hmm. that's the harder part certainly not without a long enough rope and then that rope would have had to stay yeah yeah so wow so we just tried to keep a lid on a can of worms it seems like there's just so much more uh to continue yeah. talking about this jake so it again if somebody wants to go and have a look at this and maybe participate because everybody's opinions are valid that's i just want to make that clear now i, yeah. I have my beliefs on it I'm not saying anybody else is crackpot or harebrained. I could believe anything could have possibly happened. Um, 
but but if they want to participate, as you said, in a civil and and community minded uh, discourse, they go to is it jakenorton.com? Yeah, yeah. So I've got this posted on the on my blog at jakenorton.com. Or if you really want to, if people really want to get into the discussion, of which there's some pretty good ones going on at at community.jakenorton.com. And and again, you have to sign up, but it takes two seconds and I won't spam anybody. But but yeah, I mean, my my feeling is like you just put beautifully, everyone's opinion is valid. And as you know, as we've seen with true crime podcasts and stuff, sometimes it's a total outsider looking at things with a new unjaded lens that says, wait, what about this? And so I, I love ideas and talking to people and learning. And yeah, so please come on by. Jake, thank you. Incredible insight. It, even though it seems obvious to me, there's almost no way they could have taken the Norton Couloir. And I readily admit that the second step was impossible. Personally, had always kind of had this vision in my mind that they got to the second step and then turned around and that's when the accident happened. I, I can't discount either theory. I think both are really valid. And I think both routes offer tremendous difficulties in getting to the summit. And the insight of Reinhold Mesner is mind boggling and really, really uh, sheds a lot of light on the possibility. And one of the things that I always maintained with the possibility of this Norton Kuwar route was that we need somebody to go there and do it. And until that happens, we really won't know. All we can refer to are the people who have been there back in the 80s, Reinhold Mesner. But uh, I think that for the people who stru truly believe that that was the way they went, they need to participate or help uh, put together an expedition to get people up the Norton Couloir. I, I know it's a big effort. It's, it's not easy to get to Mount Everest in the first place. And who knows if China's going to even open the doors to let people in. So the mystery continues. Uh, great that you were here. Thank you for participating. I truly respect all of the efforts that go into this. The armchair mountaineers and mountaineers alike, we're all together in this. So I hope you are well and have a great day. Thank you for being here and I will see you all real soon.